Good. Okay. Okay, this is the um, Town of Woodbridge uh, monthly Board of Finance meeting for June 18th, 2015. Um, item number one is public comments. I have, I have to make a public comment for Michael Luther. I couldn't, he wanted to come tonight, but he couldn't because he's going on a schooner. But he was allowed to steer or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Michael doesn't. <laughs> Michael doesn't email anymore. Um, so he gave me this. I'm going to read it as best I can. His handwriting. I, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't type anymore either. But I told him I'd do the best I can. It is with deep regret that Matt has been asked to read these words to you on my behalf. You are one of many groups in Woodbridge, by and with which attempts have been made to be of service to our town over 37 years of my 58 among you. The Board of Finance to me is the most important, is the most important work, or does the most important work, we have done on nuts and bolts, basic, necessary, and ordinary functions. However, 58 years in Woodbridge is still less than 62 years as a member of Mystic Seaport. At this very moment, I am there at a reunion and talk of the tens of thousands who saw and walked the deck of the Charles, whatever. Charles Morgan. Charles W. Morgan, there you go. During port visits over eight weeks last summer, the trustees selected five Seaport members for each of the eight segments of her 38th voyage, and very few of those groups of five were found fit and knowledgeable enough to take a turn at the helm. Mm -hmm. So please accept from Matt two items. Each of you has worked so hard for the triple A rated appre appreciation award, for the triple A rated appreciation award, and at least you may find interest in one man's dream come true, Michael. And he, he sent a package for everybody with this, because in here is his letter. It, he was allowed to steer the boat, and there's a picture of him. Oh my wow. gosh! Look at that. That's great. Which is which is very rare on its 38th voyage. Uh, it says on the back, our summer in this, our visit in the summer of 1933 was the first time Colonel Green told our parents it was safe for we four siblings to go down and play, play on her main deck. And he also sent everybody an appreciation award for voluntary service <laughs> to Woodbridge from a fellow citizen. Nice. And it's a quote from uh, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt, which I won't read, but it's... So it's every, a great quote, though. Oh, yeah, I'll read it. You got <laughs> it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself for a worthy cause who at the best knows, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while, while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who, need, who knew neither victory nor defeat. And that's from Teddy Roosevelt. So. That is really, mm -hmm. really Michael was Michael was beautiful. deeply troubled by the election. Mm -hmm. I think we all saw that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and his speech that night at the budget hearing when he said, Chicken Little, the sky isn't falling. I mean, that was his, his attempt to send that message. So I'll give you each one of these. And, he, and he, he's got his little MLC. That's his that's symbol. Great. That's great. So. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the public comments. And I told Michael I would, uh, I would read it to everybody. Okay. Next. Well, the first item is uh, Administrative Officer, Director of Finance Report, Tony. Thank you. Um, the uh, monthly report that I had written for May of 2015 was that there would be a surplus, a budgetary surplus of $352,000 at the end of the year, which means that based on the fact that we have a contribution of $400,000 from fund balance would be essentially a $48,000 uh, drawdown. Mm -hmm. uh, since that time, uh, we have been notified that there is a FEMA reimbursement for the snow uh, expenditures from the January storm that we had. Mm -hmm. Ours should be around $40,000. So uh, based on the timing of those uh, those funds, um, it's, I'm hopeful that we can include those in the year-end totals, which would mean that we would pretty much cover 
the four hundred thousand dollar drawdown from fund balance. So if, if I could interject, yes, because as, as I uh, as I said as I said at a point in time, I would I couldn't answer everything the night of the budget hearing for obvious reasons, but I said as time went by, questions from people uh, uh, that have come to me, I would attempt to answer them, and, and this is one of the questions I heard at least three or four times, and that is the the, the um, statement that you start every year in a four hundred thousand dollar hole. And what I said to the people I had a chance to speak to is, it's not where you start, it's where you end. And all we, the reason the $400,000 is in the budget is because we go to a town meeting, we need town meeting approval to have the availability of the $400,000 if we need it. So we don't start the year $400,000 in the hole. We start the year with the possibility that if we need the $400,000, we can use it. However, it's a, pr it's a rule, generally, that we always have a surplus. And here, here's a good example. At the end of the year, we don't have to use any of that 400000 So uh, it's just, again, a statement that misled a lot of people, caused a lot of questions, and it, it's just not the case. It's where you end the year that's important, not, not where you begin the year. So as Tony said, we're not going to have to touch fund balance. And, and typically, um, as you all know, if you uh, and those who have sat through these meetings knows that um, as the year goes on, we react to what's going on around us. Correct. And if it looks like there's going to be a problem, we take we adjust right. so that we can try to cover that four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And also, um, we budget conservatively, particularly in revenues. So um, that's. You know, and it, 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 tie, it does touch on that later on in the Moody's report, which I'll bring up. And our departments run great budgets. They submit great budgets, and they operate great budgets, and they work with Tony. They trust Tony. Mm -hmm. And so if Tony tells them it's time to slow down something, right. they slow it down. That's and, correct. They do. I, I can't remember a year. I think one year where we had a surplus, we used it to buy open space, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. So that we did use the That was the only 000. time right. there was a surplus. I mean, there was a drawdown generated by within the last several years right. um, by an expenditure the other usually the other times it was revenue driven which we had no real no control over okay um, continue okay so yeah um, the um, so our um, other revenue issues are interest income is um, uh, a shortfall of twenty five thousand dollars we did lower that for the next year uh, so hopefully we won't have that problem again and um, we actually are, have a surplus of about $80,000 in private duty revenues, primarily due to um, uh, increased activity and some increased fees that we are charging for that. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has a surplus of about $25,000, largely due to a uh, surplus in legal fees and outside council services. <coughs> uh, police Department sh should have a surplus of about $50,000, uh, largely due to a shortage in personnel there. Um, Waste management has a projected uh, surplus of uh, $45,000, largely due to surpluses in tip fees, bulky waste disposal and recycling. Uh, and there's reduced tonnages there uh, based on what our budget was. in um, recreation, primarily due to staffing vacancies, is uh, projected to have a surplus of about $15,000. The library, uh, again, mainly due to staffing vacancies, primarily the director's position, it should experience a surplus of about forty thousand dollars. Employee benefits uh, should uh, experience a surplus of roughly forty thousand dollars. Also, that's largely due to um, <coughs> some uh, surpluses in retiree health care and police retirement. And uh, finally, the board of education is reporting a surplus of about fifty thousand dollars. Those are our large, larger variances to the budget. So with all of this, our fund balance is approximately 9.75%. That's right. Okay. And if, if you add this FEMA, it'll increase it a little. Yep. 9.8 maybe. You want to yeah. round that up to 10? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> By the way, Bethany, I was with the, when I was at EMD, the Bethany, Bethany had to use a, a chunk of money for roads and whatever, so they're down to 10 just like us. So they're not at 13 anymore. Okay. All righty. Update on financial policies. Um, over the next uh, few meetings, there are several financial policies that um, we'll be, we'll be um, reviewing 
and uh, bringing for, to your attention there's the um, we have a, an investment policy there's a fixed asset policy some of these have come to you at various points uh, a debt policy and um, most importantly a fund balance policy so these are some of the policies that um, I felt it was time to um, review and to update so um, I hope to have those for you soon so will you propose the updates correct that you would like to see? yeah we'll okay. propose the updates and then okay. I'll discuss once I once I send you a draft where um, what the results I found in other towns what areas are are more important than others okay. and you know where you know and go from there okay. and, and you good. know if you can review it and yeah. if you want more information I can do that I mean it's like a, it's a process okay okay Woodbridge Board of Ed you already reported a fifty thousand dollar surplus right. and um, anything else, anything else on that I'm sure Sandy might have something on that yeah. we're good with that Tom yep anything else no okay so why don't you go into the, the Moody's report okay I felt that uh, we had just um, Every year when we issue uh, bonds or notes, we um, get a report from Moody's. There are several rating agencies that are out there. There's Standard & Poor's, there's Moody's, there's Fitch. Those are the three major ones. Uh, we use Moody's, and a lot of smaller towns like us use Moody's. Some of the larger towns use both Moody's and Standard and & Poor's, and, and even Fitch. Some of the bigger towns in the state that issue a lot of debt on a regular basis. Um, and so, um, as, as you can see here, and as it was announced, the town, uh, Moody's assigns a, a AAA rating to our, our um, $5.9 million in bonds that we're issuing for a refunding. And um, our outlook is stable, which means that, uh, generally the outlook means that um, if there is an issue that could impact your ratings, they'll generally give you a negative outlook. And basically that's a, a warning to say, listen, you better straighten out whatever issue you have, or the next time you come for a rating, you'll probably get, you could possibly get downgraded. So as you can see, our outlook is stable. Um, if you had a lower than a AAA rating, you can get a positive outlook, which means that you could get upgraded the next time. Um, but anyway, we have a we have our AAA, which is the highest you can get. And I just thought it would be, it was helpful for you to review this. Um, a few things that um, it, it gives you the outlook which is a, uh, our stable financial position and adequate reserve levels. Um, and some of our strengths, which is a stable uh, residential tax base, strong financial management, including adoption of a formal fund balance policy, which ties into that fund balance, fund balance mm -hmm. policy discussion that we were just talking about. And a manageable debt position, which I also thought was important because it's manageable debt position. Right. And so, that sort of ties into our discussion on debt and about how you know the debt we've issued recently is still manageable, right. but we, we need to keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. um, um, the other thing is um, an interesting one about what can make the fund rating go down is more of a general comment about structural imbalance that some towns do. They usually put that in every um, a lot of reports, but some towns tend to either overestimate revenues on a regular basis or inflate numbers to try to come up with an artificially low tax rate mm -hmm. and then consistently draw down on their fund balance. That's sort of what they're talking about there, which we do not do. And again, with your with your advice and with all that we know, we keep all these things completely where they should be and we don't, uh, we never put the town in any kind of jeopardy. With right, that, so. right. That's, that, that's what and I'm, with I'm especially I'm especially pleased with manageable debt position because we heard again and again that we couldn't borrow five cents if we wanted to, which was, is not true. Right. It's not true. And again, we all know how much input Tony gives us on current debt, proposed debt, future debt. We're constantly aware of what goes on, and that's, that allows us to take on new debt when we're retiring old debt, which keeps the uh, tax rate stable. So. Um, one of our challenges <coughs> that it does, it does say is that the town has a moderate amount of enterprise risk within ownership of the ball, of course. Put that in the water. We know what that is. Right. So, so um, those are my comments. If there are any questions, or congratulations. It's good news. It's yeah, it's good news. I thought so. Great work. Yeah. And, and I think also a lot of the comments in here really show that they looked at the whole town. These are not just bullet points, but they really characterize the financial situation. 
Um, and what are the positives and negatives? They talk about the fact that our grand list has gone down, but we still have a very stable demographic profile, and you know the value of um, our grand list is appropriate, and it doesn't jeopardize what our bond rating is. So, would it be appropriate to put this actually on the website for people I think to look at? On, it's actually on um, on their website. Moody's posts it on theirs. But so we can put it on our I'm sure yeah, we because could. I think there were yeah. so many questions about this, and I think this really so validates what so our financial position is. So I don't think that's a problem if they is. have it on their website. We could probably post it on ours. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. We can double check with them, or we can link to it. Well, link you to can it. link to it. Yeah, that that would be fine also. Yeah. But I think there's some really, um, you know, very good statements and analysis here that people should see mm -hmm. um, based on the financial health and strength of the town. Good suggestion. Okay. Update on bonds note sale. So we're, we're a little active at the moment. <laughs> the um, a, a, a town has done a few things. And the first is that um, starting in uh, next month, we're going to be uh, rolling the, well, let's, let's start with the, this month. This month, I want to pass this out. We um, did a refunding. I thought I would share the results of the refunding with you. Just for the people in television land, why don't you just run through what you mean by a refund? The refunding is when the town um, issues new debt to replace old debt, uh, issues new debt at a lower interest rate to replace old debt that's at a higher interest rate, similar to like a mortgage refinance is a, is a good way to then Basically, Tony, what happens there is when we issue the original debt, it's callable at certain points. That's correct. And when it's callable, yep. it means we can call them back. Mm -hmm. sure. And unfortunately, who's ever got the uh, bonds with the higher interest rate doesn't have them anymore. That's right. It's a that's very right. common. It's a very that's common. Uh, mm -hmm. It's happened to me many times. So sometimes, if, it, <laughs> yeah. if it's not callable, but it still makes sense for us to do it, right. you, you'll put money in escrow, yep. and then when it's callable, then the escrow agent pays the callable mm -hmm. bond as soon as it becomes okay. callable. So um, mm -hmm. we uh, refund. We refunded. Um, uh, six, just about six million dollars in bonds, and um, the uh, budgetary savings is uh, three hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars. You can see it; that's uh, about halfway down. Mm -hmm. And um, the budgetary savings are are listed below, which impact mainly in fiscal year seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. And you can see that in each year, there's a hundred thousand dollars savings, wow. and those are the three years where we had some peaks. In our debt because mm -hmm. of the Beecher, particularly mm -hmm. the Beecher yeah, issue. It comes at a good time. So yeah. it was, it was a good. Uh, it was a. Uh, uh, we uh, crafted it so that it would um, help with that. So issue. this this is done. It's done. It's done. Yep. And Tony, um, people may think this is related to Beecher Road School it is not borrowing, no. but it's no. for. It's we, sure the bonds we refunded were from 03, which was for the. Uh, it was actually the roof, Beecher roof, and open space, 05, which was a. Previous refunding, uh, which was from the library and um, uh, other open space, and then 09, which is the firehouse. So those are the projects that we refunded. Because we all know, since those years, interest rates have fallen significantly. That's right. That's right. And the, and the return on uh, municipal debt has also fallen, so why not take advantage of it? That's correct, yeah. So that, those are the results of our refunding, so okay, I good. thought that was good news. Good job. That's great. And this relates to the refinancing that Moody's. That's that's correct. Right. Okay. That's why so we did the Moody's report, right? right. It's it because together. we were going yeah. to refund, mm -hmm. and so when we refunded, we wanted a rating. Sure. So when we repriced the refunded bonds, we had a triple A rating to mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. And, right. and 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 it'll also help with our next month activity, which is um, that we have to. Um, we have to um, issue partial bonds and notes for the school based on the work that's been done and, and mm -hmm. what we, 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 it's sort of a mix because we mm -hmm. don't know quite yet what we're getting from grants, so we can't borrow, and, and the project's not done, so we right. sort of make an estimate on that. And um, the other important thing is that we are rolling the notes for the country club, and at mm -hmm. some point, the town has to make yep. a decision on that. Yep. Um, you can't roll notes forever, although I think it is 10, maybe 10 years. Hmm. So we do have a few more years on that. But um, Why don't you explain that a little bit? Okay, so every year, instead of issuing 20-year bonds, fixing the rate, 
fixing the price, the uh, interest rate, and then the payments, and then that's it. We're locked into it. Every year we um, issue notes, and at the, when we they're priced, when we issue the notes, the bond the interest rate changes. So you're subject to interest rate risk in the market because every year it, it changes. Mm -hmm. um, we've been lucky and fortunate that we've been in a low interest rate environment, and it's actually been declining. Um, so, but eventually that's going to change, and so. Um, each year we take that risk. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Say the country club, which was about seven million. Yeah. We've been paying that for a few years now. Right. When we refine, if we, if we were to issue permanent notes, mm -hmm. would we get 20 years from that point or we would no. get 20 years from when we originally Correct. started taking the... Uh, Correct. 20 years from when we originally started... Um, it's 20 years from when we originally started the drawdowns on it. Each year we owe one twentieth of the principal. But we've been paying the correct amount of principal every year. It's yeah, just these correct. are lower interest rates. That's right. So it's been since 2012. So. Right. But we only have to issue it for the amount that's left oh, yeah, to pay correct. off. So at the end of the right. day, it would be this, it's still the Nothing 300, changes. Nothing right. changes. Right. It's just that you're going to have a fixed interest rate. Right. Which correct. would probably be a little bit higher than we're paying on the... Uh, on the bonds. On the, on the, on the that's right. The note. That's on correct. Because it's, it's a longer term, so there's more... The, end of the yeah. longer end of the curve. Generate, usually generates higher rates. Mm -hmm. That's something because short term rates are really. We should low. take a look at that because rates are going to go up. Right. So if we can lock it in now, I think. Uh, this is the, if it's not locked in, then it's a lot easier if you're going to sell a portion of or, or not a portion to hmm. um, when you roll the notes. Let's say you get three million dollars for it. You just bond the difference. Right. Or you pay it off. Or you pay right. Or you pay the whole thing off, depending on how much you get. Right. Right. Because you're. They'll be watching that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope, oh, that's it. Okay, number five is approval of suspense list. I think we've talked about this. <coughs> the last time we got a suspense list for, for our information, this is the one we're going to um, approve. And again, this is just by state statute. We have to take these off of the uh, active uh, tax collection list, but uh, they continue, the uh, tax collector continues to go after these and do whatever it is That's in their power to collect these. That's absolutely correct. So, so I had a question uh, in that we have bills from 2008, 2009, and then it goes to 2012. So there's nothing in between 10 and 11? If I look at the bill number, is that the correct date of when it was? That's the uh, grand list year, that's right. So let's say 13, uh, it says the year up at the top. That's 14, 15. Yeah, so that's the year. That's correct. Well, also, but also, uh, it's real if you notice, that's real estate. Yeah, that's it right. ends in 209. It's real estate. The oh. next list is personal property. Yeah. Got it. Okay, that's the difference. So there's that a limited the number of real estate ones. Okay. That's correct. Okay, fine. Now I understand. Now, like, like I'm not going to mention yes. any names, but there's a couple here from a, yes. a, a particular <laughs> person. Yes. 4,267 in 2008. Yep. 4,000. There's liens on that property, right? Would you imagine? The two properties that are here? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So th this real estate That's stuff, correct. even though even though it's going into suspense, um, we've got liens on the property. Right. Okay. To. Correct. So when the property is sold, we're going to get this money. So, And that's there's like uh, 8500 right. that, That's an important bit of information. Like $16,000 <laughs> worth. Yeah. More than that, really. On the other hand, mm -hmm. some of them are such tiny numbers. Yeah, I know. You'd think we could just write them off I know. and not yeah. have to keep even yeah, I'm sure them. Yeah, I'm sure she's not going after $4.64. Really? Yes. <laughs> right. That's right. Poor Mary, wherever she is. <laughs> I mean, do we have some type of like general guideline where we say if it's under a certain amount? Don't it's all worry run by, about it's it? all by state statute. Oh, really? She probably just forgets about it. Yeah. Okay. Technically, these okay. come off of our books. Okay. When we when we approve this, and she probably she's not going to even I mean she's not even going to worry about them. Okay. Chances are they might be like they were late, and it's like a month's interest or something right. that they didn't probably. I see. Yeah. I see. So, all right. Well, I will. Okay. Um, Thank you. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the suspense list from our tax collector, dated uh, one June two thousand fifteen. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next <coughs> is funding requests. Okay. Yeah, so. <clears throat> 
The first one is a line item transfer, 141523 in the amount of $4,600 and it's within the fire department. It's uh, from electric to rentals and it was <coughs> to rent a machine to clean snow out from away from the fire hydrants and uh, it's an increase of dumpster pickup. So I'll move acceptance of line item transfer 1415-23 in the amount of $4,600. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's right. That's all. Right. Like, tonight, tonight yeah. I'd like us all to, just for tonight. We're going to yes. say yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll go back to I next time. That's all right. right. Okay. Just for symbolic reasons, we're going to say yes. Okay. Say yes. 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 Okay. Yes. You, you understand that. Yes. You understand that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I understand. Now you're supposed to say I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next is um, a request for funding from our contingency fund. Uh, 1415-24 in the amount of 14000 It was for a deficit in the uh, sand salt materials account. I think that's pretty self-explanatory considering, uh, considering the amount of events we had. So I'll move acceptance of uh, request for funding 1415-24 in the amount of $14,000. Second. Any discussion on that? I was looking at... I, I take care of our church, um, and of course, the year before was the blizzard, and yet this past year, our snow our snow removal expenses went up by fifty percent. So there was a lot more snow removal. You would think with that crazy storm that we would have uh, we would have spent a lot more. We spent more this past winter, so the town follows right in that. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Jeez. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I said yes. I will not make that mistake again. Okay, next is line item transfer 1415-25 in the amount of 9470 <clears throat> And it's to transfer funds from the operating budget to a capital budget project that were budgeted for the renovations in the senior center lounge for the senior center director and to create an activity room in room 11 of the center building. I will move acceptance of line item transfer 1415-25 in the amount of 9470 Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say yes. 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 <laughs> Next is um, government access television, <clears throat> and it's to purchase some small pieces of equipment. There's a letter here from Pua. Um, I'll move acceptance of line item transfer 1415-26 in the amount of $1,570. Any discussion on this? All those in favor say yes. 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 Okay. We we'll go back to I next time. <laughs> That'll be next year, next fiscal year. We're going to forget this. Okay. So, Tony, at the end, after all this, I don't know if there's anything coming up, we have a balance of approximately 43000 Yeah, and actually there is because, um, if you remember correctly, we cut some radios out of the capital budget in order to, okay. uh, from the police department. That, okay. That'll pay for it. Okay. You'll give it to us. I'll, we'll do that in July. In July. Yeah. Okay. Approval of minutes. Um, the first set of minutes <coughs> is uh, the monthly meeting, uh, April 16th, 2015. I'll move acceptance of the minutes of April 16th, 2015 is presented. Second. Any discussion, corrections, adjustments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> all those in favor? Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Aaron said yes. I'm losing it. <laughs> I'm losing it here. Right. This, the, next, the next minutes are from our very brief annual town meeting. Um, and I will move acceptance of the minutes of the May 18th, 2015 meeting as presented. Second. Any discussion on these? <laughs> All those in favor? Yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, July. The goal is to change the habit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, July 2015 meeting date. Uh, I guess I'm looking to change it because I, I don't believe I'm going to be able to make it, and it's usually a fairly important meeting. So, Karen, what was the date we um, settled on? July 22nd, or is that a special meeting? That's, it. that's, that's, a, that's a special that's meeting. meeting. 20 seconds. That's a Wednesday. You could do it the same day. What time is the What time is the special meeting? We haven't we scheduled it yet. We just asked people to hold the date. Right. We do a double header. It all depends. The 24th, yeah. right? Shouldn't be that much. 22nd. July 22nd? Uh, you don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on June. Yeah. It's just that, it, you know, unless. Yeah, well, yeah. Our meetings are about an hour, so if we if we meet at. What if we meet at 5.30? Can we meet at 5.30? And then we can start the other meeting. All right, so let's meet at 5.30 yeah. and we'll task them if they can do the meeting at 6.30. Right, yeah. so then that's good. We've done it in an hour. Our meeting will have to be a special meeting. Special meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Are we doing the same? So it's the same. That's that makes yeah. We'll kill, we'll kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, first selections report. Helen. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm remiss, I was remiss in, in the beginning. I usually congratulate all the um, all the uh, candidates who were successful in their election campaign, and uh, we look forward to a, a, a very good year coming up. I'd especially like to congratulate Ellen. I think uh, Ellen uh, stood above the fray and did a, did a wonderful job of presenting her, her vision for the town, and I believe the townspeople uh, responded. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I thought I would start the monthly report with today, which was the Beecher Road School graduation held at the <laughs> high school, and it was, of course, lovely and charming and very excited, happy sixth graders moving on. Um, I also uh, got the news today that Amity Regional Middle School in Bethany was ranked number 11 in the state. Orange is number 12, so both of the Amity uh, Middle Schools did very, very well. That's, that was wonderful news. Um, Memorial Day, we had two ceremonies here in Woodbridge. The first was at the firehouse, first thing in the morning, and then the second was our ceremony at the um, in front of the memorial, in front of the center building. And, you know, both of our um, <coughs> Memorial Day celebrations are very, very serious and somber events, unlike some in other towns, and I think they were very meaningful for everyone who attended. Uh, I attend the uh, South Central Connecticut Regional Council of Government meetings. We approved a new budget this year. And, and again, it's an important group to um, work together with other towns. We maximize grant opportunities and, and, and just learn from each other. So it's very worthwhile. Uh, on June 2nd, we had our first uh, business after hours for Woodbridge businesses. Betsy Yagler did a terrific job organizing it. I think she had the feeling just before, you know, when you sort of having a party and she was worried nobody would come. But there were about 40 people there and it was high energy. People really appreciated it and are looking forward to continued meetings for our businesses. And there was nice coverage in the Woodbridge Town News of, oh, yes. of that event. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was a terrific event. It was at uh, Wheeler's and I think it was a good opportunity to highlight and showcase Wheelers as well. Peter Latronica, who owns Wheelers, greeted people there, so it, it was very successful. Uh, we had our last chance solar workshop, part of our solar and energy efficiency program, and that was again well attended. The goal, we had um, 15 homes with solar when this uh, project started, and we're up to, the, the goal was to double it, and we've added at least 16 more, so we've more than met the goal, so that's going very well. I attended two Eagle Scout Courts of Honor, and I just continue to be so impressed by what the Eagle Scouts do. Uh, one was Jonathan Schwartz. He built an outdoor chapel for B'nai Jacob and Ezra Academy. It's a reading bench and benches for congregants to gather, and it's used for Friday night services already. And Ryan Olenek uh, worked on refurbishing the trail at the uh, Rotary Memorial Pavilion mm -hmm. to the tennis courts and the trail pulling out poison ivy and other brush and putting in deer resistant shrubs. So both of them did terrific jobs. My monthly meetings include meetings with Mayor Harp. Again, a really important way to keep abreast of what's happening in New Haven and look for opportunities to work together. Tony and I meet with many different people, but including Dr. Stella and Al, and that's very important. Matt met with us as well, so that we really stay um, up, to, up to date on what's happening at Beecher, which is such an important part of our budget. I attend the uh, monthly Masaro Farm board meetings also as an ex officio officer. There was, I, I could not attend the May meeting. Um, Betsy went in my place and 
one other time over this year I wasn't able to attend, and Beth Heller, who's the second selectman, attended. Well, apparently at this last meeting, some people were very upset and didn't think, as an ex officio officer, someone else should go in my place. So we discussed this at the next meeting. And um, Masaro is going to have a policy that nobody can send a substitute. You know, I personally thought, as ex officio, I'm not the member, it's the office, and it would be both appropriate and helpful, but that was how the board decided on that one. Um, you all may have heard about um, some controversy about benches at Fitzgerald property, and the Board of Selectmen reviewed the situation with the benches and made a decision that we would be asking Coupop to look at the Fitzgerald property generally. It's been very casual in how it operates with the community gardens and benches, but with respect to Mr. Prasad's benches, he has agreed and the Board of Selectmen agreed that he would move them simply to the other side of the garden so they wouldn't be out in the middle of the field but still be part of what was originally approved. So I think we, we came to a good resolution on that. And I did want to update you, you know, we're um, seeking to do a solar farm on the capped landfill and we have, um, we did a very successful RFP, I think we had about a dozen or ten, ten there was a, yeah. yeah. And we've chosen one. There are two impediments to us going forward. One is the ZREC auction, and I won't get into all the details of this, which I think I'm finally understanding. Right, right. But um, the company we've chosen will be bidding for certain credits, and if they don't, if if they don't get an award of credits, we don't go f forward at this time. And also, there is a cap on the number of projects in the state that can be done under this program. And right now, the it's full up to the cap, although our attorney says some of the projects might not go forward, but we're hoping that the legislature lifts the cap so that we can do it, because it would be great for the town. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Liaison reports. Um, we'll start with Amity. Um, things are going good at Amity. They just hired a new principal. I'm sure you all saw that. Uh, as far as their budget goes, um, as of uh, this is as of May 31st, they have a surplus of 555,000, of which 150,000 <coughs> has been designated to go into next year's budget, leaving a balance of 405,000. Um, experience and history has shown that that usually grows in the month of J June as final bills come in, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I believe that the other two members of the, I've been talking about this regularly with them, uh, and of course I'm sure you remember that they took all this money last year and put it into yeah. the health insurance reserve, mm -hmm. um, and I was protesting that because they had, they had what they thought was a bad year, and everything I had heard from the insurance geniuses who run this thing is that you have one out of five are bad and that the following year should be better and to make a long story short this year this is through May or it's for the year they budgeted four million three hundred eighty seven thousand for claims and they came in so far at three million eight hundred eighty eight thousand or a surplus of close to a half a million dollars which I told them you know, that, that's what I had heard that particular year where they had a bad year, there were two very big cases where they spent a lot of money. So, with all that, uh, they have a, they're going to have a reserve fund of 34.5%, which is ridiculously high. I mean, it's just ridiculously high. So, I think I finally got the, the chairman from uh, Bethany and the member from our, yeah. And we kind of made it clear to them that we really, you know, because they're already talking about what they're going to do with this year-end balance. And we kind of made it clear to them that we expect to get some money back. And now, you yeah. know, when 13 people sit down and go over this and they're told that by one member in particular that we've got to fund the OPEB trust, which they do not, um, and add money to this reserve fund, which it's just, they're just... I finally said to them, are you sure this is the way to go with this insurance, this self-insured fund? It seems like it's costing a lot of money and is it really working? And nobody seems to have the answer other than, look, we did it and now we're with it. So, But um, I've been kind of hammering them every month on this. So I asked them, I said, okay, so there's a $500,000 
favorable variance in the actual claims to budgeted, what did you do for the 15, for, uh, 15 16 year? It, it, Anthem told them to raise it. So it's going to mm -hmm. go, I said, are you crazy? <laughs> You're half a million dollars over. You're going to go higher with the, with the, I said, you know, every month, every month has been pretty consistent. They had one bad month in the whole time. So I don't know. I'm supposed to meet with Jack Levine and I don't know what's going to come of that, but they, they, they just seem to be petrified of, of uh, not having enough money in case the, I said, you know, if it ever came to that, I said, it's not going to come to that. You got a, you got a million four hundred thousand in reserve. I mean, are you kidding me? Uh, but, I don't know, I think it's not something they quite understand. I don't know that I completely understand it, but I could tell you that the three towns are pretty much firmly embedded in the idea that you better not spend all this money again, which I'm not going to tell you they won't, because they've already got things they're talking about spending it on. And if they do, then I report back and we decide, you know, just what, what kind of statement we want to make to them about this, because I keep reminding them mm -hmm. it's the town's money, really. I mean, I know the way education budgets work, once you have it, it's yours to spend, but like, like Beecher does, you know, they, they watch it closely, they talk to us about it, they keep us apprised of it, we make decisions about it, and, and they return part of it to us. Mm -hmm. um, Amity doesn't seem to be of the opinion that they should have to return it to us, which is going to be a dangerous mm. Precedent. Dangerous precedent to set. Yes. So, but we're all over it, and, and like I said, I, I finally had the, the other two members on board with this. Mm -hmm. So. So, in terms of taking a look at what they're spending in terms of claims, mm -hmm. have they tried to compare this to what premiums would be? Um, I don't know. I asked that question, and they were, they seemed miffed that I was even asking it because well, this is what we you, have, right? No, but said, that's what you have to do exactly. to really evaluate whether exactly. or not this is the right option. I know. I'm, I've talked to Tony about it, and he says he's you know a group that size. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> A group, a group that That's size, yeah, it can be tricky. So, I don't know. Like, like I said, they did it. They did it when they first did it. They did it to save money in that year's budget. They saved a half a million dollars, but I don't know that it's saving money anymore. So, I did ask them that question. Like I said, they looked at me like, "Are you kidding me? You're asking us that question?" Said, yeah, I'm asking that question. You know? Like we always review our insurances and make sure you know. Right. You got to look and at you it. Put it out for bid again. Would you, it's the right. same thing. Would you be better off with a traditional type plan? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Health savings accounts. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'll be on this. I, I keep talking to them about it, and, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Karen. I was not able to go to human services. Okay. No problem. Andrew. Mr. Luther came and spoke at the police commission. Hmm. Okay. Oh. And he spoke for a while, and he passed out. Certificates, which I was able to receive one. Oh, you're gonna have two now. I have two now. Wow. <laughs> and uh, okay, you rate. <laughs> and the 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 obviously the other issue was Tony covered one about budget was in his report, and the other one is still uh, personnel still continues to be an issue still, and that dries over time. So right. And when will that report be ready? Evaluates based on coverage from any police officers. Estimated. I don't. You know. I don't know. I thought that thing. That report. Felt, you know. The meeting. I sat in on that. And I thought that was going to take months. That wasn't something that was going to be. Because they were. My understanding. Were evaluating the uh, whole department. I, I think they had said it would be this summer. Yeah. Summer. That's correct. When, when so they correct. talked about it, it was going to take. They've been, been working on that do. for a while. Yes. So it okay. should be close. Okay. Of course, this latest incident. We'll give them overtime. Well, yeah, that's a that's an amazing story. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, I mean, this is let's just look at the news. It's all over the country. They they break and they go in and they come out. Yep. So whether it's watches or whatever they whatever they steal, did they catch anybody yet? They got they got pictures of them. I don't know whether they're going to catch them or not. But I think they were wearing masks. Did yeah. they get? I don't think. Well, I don't they know. didn't get that much from what, I, from what I read. They didn't get that much from what I heard. So, David, anything? No. Okay, Sandy. Uh, I went to the Woodbridge Library Commission on Monday, June eighth, and um, unfortunately, there are a few things that are starting to cause some problems. One is the elevator again. Ah. I'm sure you've heard about mm -hmm. that, Tony. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the same type of problem um, where it just doesn't move. Um, you get in there, you press the buttons, and it doesn't go anywhere. 
and um, I think they're really not sure about what to do now. Um, I mean, I'm sure they've talked to you about it, mm -hmm. and you will help them with this, we but will. it's a, a real a concern. Plan, yeah. Okay. We have a plan to hopefully resolve that issue. Hopefully. Amity had that problem. The, the uh, elevator went on the frets yeah. and they had to do an emergency, couldn't get the parts. You know, same story. So. Right. Okay. Um, we are unfortunately starting to have C-car issues again in terms of, um, you know, delivering the books that we order and that we actually, uh, you know, from a town residents, from other libraries and also books that we give out. So um, Eric is trying to deal with that. Um, they want to um, and are going to upgrade the wireless network um, in the library, and that will help tremendously in terms of use of the computers. And um, Eric is also going to um, be focusing on a records management process, um, which the library has been a little bit remiss in terms of having. In terms of how long do you keep books, what do you do with them, um, and, and having really a uniform way of disposal and recording what you actually um, no longer keep. Um, they were happy to report on the One Book, One Town, and they're very um, you know, encouraged in terms of the participation of that. The farmer's market is going to start next week um, on the 24th, so I encourage people to mm -hmm. attend that. Um, and I think their focus in terms of developing more community programs has really been extremely successful. Um, and Eric is enjoying being in his new position, um, and he really likes the staff. And he likes being back in Connecticut, which is great. Um, the Woodbridge Board of Education Finance Committee um, also met on Monday, June 8th. And they're actually anticipating an $86,000 surplus, of which $50,000 they will return to the right. town. Right, right, yeah. And that will go to pay Officer Lynch, I guess, for overtime, mm -hmm. since they've had to, because of their um, personnel issues, um, change Officer Lynch's schedule um, at Beecher, and um, for the time that he can actually be there, it will be overtime that needs to be paid to him, or days off that he takes. Um, so that that's that was the agreement. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding of mm -hmm. what that fifty thousand will go towards. The other thirty thousand, or approximately thirty thousand, will go to fund the summer programs. Um, it is at Amity High School again this summer, and there are um, anticipated increased costs compared to when they hold it at Beecher. Um, so that's what that other money will be used for. Um, there is some anticipation that special ed um, may be an issue for the upcoming year. It's something they're going to watch very closely, but as usual, they want to make us aware of um, when they think there may be a potential financial issue. Um, teacher negotiations will basically be for fiscal year 17, so those will be going on during this current year. Uh, I think they've already started, um, but that will be something for us to watch out for as well. Um, with the summer program, um, it will be shorter um, than last year, and um, th they expect that the enrollment will be somewhat lower because of that. Um, so they are making adjustments in terms of um, that program. And that is it. Okay. Anything else that you'd like to say? No? I'll, uh, I'll move a German. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget your envelope.